Stiff knees happen all the time. Physio school never gave me a clear approach. Over the past 30 years, I've fine-tuned my own approach. It's safe and effective, and I won't even tar charge you tuition. Let me explain. A stiff knee here isn't just an OA patient who feels stiff, or Celine Dion with her stiff person syndrome. I'm talking about patients whose knee active range of motion is lousy, like missing 20 degrees of extension to 60 degrees of flexion, or missing 10 degrees of extension to 80 degrees of flexion. Those aren't great. I see these patients all the time, post-surgery, post-fracture. I had one patient who went for a cardiac catheterization accessing through the femoral artery in the groin, but then developed complications with that access point. When he finally finished multiple antibiotics and months of immobilization, the cardiologist sent him to physio with difficulty walking. His knee range of motion was terrible, but that's why we're here. So do your assessment, history, range of motion, strength, watch their gait, all the usual stuff. This is where I categorize my patients as overuse injuries, traumatic injuries, or systemic injuries. That was uh, this video here. This has impact on our treatments, and we'll talk about that in section three later on. If you stay to the end, I have a bonus treatment uh, section as well, but not yet. We have to start with section one, and don't just skip ahead with the timestamps. I'm watching you. Section one, the basics. Patients need extension first. Flexion comes later. Start with restoring that knee extension so they can improve their walking. If your patient is missing five to 10 degrees of knee extension, then it's gonna throw off their walking. You need to push to get that full knee extension as early as possible. My only warning here is to not irritate the patient. Don't irritate the knee joint. Remember, I'm always saying pain-free exercise. And you have to look at the other knee because if they're mildly flexed old person, they may maybe getting to zero isn't realistic. Then you need to aim for being equal on both sides. I've seen some of these old guys live with minus five or minus 10 degrees of knee extension. In school, everyone had to get a textbook normal range of motion, but in real life, that doesn't always happen. Like I said, aim for full knee extension, but sometimes we have to settle for a little bit of a symmetric loss. It's the same with flexion. How much flexion do you want? All of it, right? Well, 80 to 90 degrees is really what you want for stairs and getting sitting in a car. So yeah, try to get to 100, try to get to 120. I'm just telling you to not make any promises to your patients. I don't wanna go off onto a rant about manipulation under anesthesia because it's a physician technique. Also, doctors do their medications, their surgery, their injections, and sometimes they do this manipulation under anesthesia. The major complication for this knee manip is a femur fracture, so we should be aware of that. Also, as physios, we see the patients after the procedure, whatever procedure they had. So they're definitely gonna be in this stiff knee category between the swelling and the irritation from the procedure and the steroid injection, uh, those knees belong here. This may be controversial, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Measure your patients when they walk in, measure them cold, because this is what they have walking around. The alternative is to give the get some crazy, wonderful peak range of motion value. Uh, some physios measure during the treatment or right after their treatment, and that's when the patient's at their best. I know it makes physios feel good. Hey, look what I did. And uh, But when your patient walks in, that's their true range of motion. That's the range of motion that they have every day. And when they go see their orthodox, that's what they're going to show them. So we want to be honest. And sometimes the truth isn't what we want, but we have to live in reality. Section two, the physio approach to the stiff knee. Remember from this other video here that there are three stages of treatment in my program. First, we treat the pain, then we treat the range of motion, then we address strength, balance, and mobility. For a stiff knee, we have to focus on recovering that range of motion. This is a mental model for treatment I developed over the years that I wish I had learned in school. That's why I'm making these videos. There are four elements to this treatment to recover motion education, exercise, manual therapy, and splinting. The first treatment element is education. Number one, focus your patient on the one or two most important things that they need to be doing. Don't give them 10 things to do, they won't do any of them. Give them one thing to focus on, like getting that knee to full extension. Two, emphasize pain-free exercise use at home. Activity is tolerated. Just because the knee is stiff doesn't mean that their life stops. Go for a walk, use a cane, crutches, walker, be safe. Remember I put the word safety in the title. Three, don't promise results. We can't promise the knee range of motion will come back. 
we need to educate our patients with the tools to let them attain their best. This is part of collaborative goal setting. Aim for 10 degrees of improvement every four to six weeks. That's my rule of thumb. And that's why I put the word effective in the title. The second treatment element is exercise. This must be a home program. Patients can't only just work out, do their exercises in the clinic. That's not enough reps. So I tell patients do them one to three times per day or even every hour. I know that's a lot, but if they're going to be doing them pain free, then the more the better. These pictures are from my exercise book. Uh, the book has more variations and I'm just going to give you my favorites for restoring knee extension and knee flexion. Remember, it's important to start with that knee extension to improve their walking right away. To restore knee extension, start with the seated straight leg raise with dorsiflexion and a quad set exercise. Progress to your favorite hamstring exercise. Progress to some dynamic motion like uh, zombie kicks. To restore knee flexion, start with a, a heel slide. A seated heel slide is great. Progress to step standing lunge. Progress to uh, something dynamic like butt kicks and high knees. The third treatment element is manual therapy. I know some people who watch my videos get the idea that I hate manual therapy or I don't do manual therapy, but it's really the passive modalities that I'm generally against. I did a video on the, act, the differences between active and passive treatments and active treatments are just better. Uh, that was this video here. There's a role for manual therapy treating the stiff knee. First, put some heat on it to relax the tissues. And if possible, get the patient to come into the clinic three to five times per week. I almost never get a family member to do manual therapy on the patient uh, unless they're trained for it. One problem with manual therapy is that there's no standard lexicon. I've dabbled in Stanley Paris and James Syriax, Kaltenborn, Evigent, M Mulligan, and Maitland. I don't follow any one of these guys. Plus, I've been lucky enough to work with some great physios. So learn from your coworkers when you can. I'll just describe some of these techniques and I'll let you play with them. Number one, long leg traction. Interlace your fingers around the distal calf proximal to the malleoli. The action is to lean back and not just rely on your arm strength. This can be gentle to start and it mostly helps with restoring extension. Two, manually assisted quad sets with your patient's leg up on the plinth, put your hands proximal and distal to the patella and don't squish the patella into the, the, the femur. Uh, that, that can be irritating. The action is to assist with knee extension while the patient does a quad set. This is a modified mulligan technique. Three, the pump handle technique. This is having the patient's leg hang, legs hanging off the plinth. You put one or both hands holding the distal shin above the malleoli and the action is to push the knee into flexion. You have some options here. You can add traction, you can add a posterior glide to the knee, you can add a medial or lateral glide. I usually do a mix of static holds and gentle on-off tension. The bottom line is the manual therapy should not be painful. Emphasize extension first, then flexion, pain-free exercises, pain-free manual therapy, well, heat, then manual therapy. The fourth treatment element is splinting. This one is controversial. I'm gonna bundle a couple of similar ideas here. The constant passive motion machines, the CPM machines, they were popular in the 1990s. Now they're in decline. Serial casting, I haven't seen this in years. Uh, it's probably more of a pediatric thing. Splints and braces can be used to improve motion. Like I said, this is controversial. I've seen mixed results. These can be static splints. I worked with a couple of patients who had a, a static knee immobilizer splint to improve or maintain that knee extension motion. I worked with one patient who was prescribed a kneeling scooter just to keep the knee flexed and keep that motion going. The other flavor of splint is the dynamic splint. There's a couple of different brand names that are around. This applies a low load for a long duration of time. I know some people love these. I know some people that hate them. Meh. Section three, modified treatment based on patient needs. Remember from this other video here that there are three diagnoses that I use, the overuse injuries, the traumatic injuries, and the systemic injuries. For a stiff knee, we need to modify our treatment based on the individual patient needs. Here are some guidelines. For overuse injuries, like a patellofemoral syndrome, a runner's knee, a patellar tendonitis, like a jumper's knee, emphasis here must be on pain management. Activity is tolerated, 
especially pain-free exercises and pain-free manual therapy, I would be hesitant to really push recovery of the motion if the patient is still struggling with pain. Again, start with knee extension. That will improve their walking and let them feel more normal. Uh, can I say normal human? Uh, I'm sure I'm going to offend somebody with that. Second, we have traumatic injuries. This is after like a fracture or a post-op patient. The emphasis here is on recovering that range of motion as we talked about earlier. This is the a group of patients that tend to do very well, I would be happy to push them to recover that motion while re retaining my pain-free approach. For systemic injuries like osteoarthritis or fibromyalgia, the emphasis here isn't necessarily on recovering textbook range of motion. Safety and recovery of activities of daily living should be, em should be emphasized. Recovering motion is as tolerated. Patients aren't just problem-filled pinatas. They're real-life human beings wasting to, waiting to burst with dance and laughter. So we need to look at the, the whole patient and see where they're, where they're at in life before we start swinging our therapy stick at them. Bonus section, the next level elements. This is what I promised you earlier. What we've talked about before already has been the basics. For some more advanced ideas, I have three things. First, adjust the th my three treatment approaches for that patient on that day. We talked about recovering range of motion for the stiff knee, blah, blah, blah. But what if your patient's having a bad day? They may walk in as a pain patient on that particular day. Maybe they need to take it easy for that visit. Don't be afraid to modify your treatment plan. Every visit is like a mini reevaluation. Or if your patient is progressing well with range of motion, maybe you can add some supplemental balance exercises. These stages of treatment are fluid and flexible. Don't be fixed in the, doing the same treatment visit uh, day after day. Look at me. I'm all loosey-goosey. I go with the flow. <laughs> We already talked about patient education. Two additional nuggets are rapport and tissue healing. For rapport, I did this video here. I know rapport isn't glamorous or exciting, but it can really make every patient's visit go from couch potato hands to jazz hands. And the other educational bonus is getting to the patient really, really understand tissue healing. Um, this is like those old PSA announcements on TV, the more you know. I tell patients that their problem is like a paper cut. If you leave that paper cut bandaged up, it'll get stiff and then you won't be able to use it. If you play with that paper cut too much, then it can prolong and irritate that healing process and take longer to heal. So the best way forward is to gentle use, gentle use of pain-free exercises and activity. And that's why I keep saying pain-free exercises and pain-free manual therapy. Um, most people will understand that paper cut analogy. Lastly, we focused here on the stiff knee. But did you look above and below? Of course you did. Watch my video here on how to do a scanning exam of the lower body. Oh wait, if this video isn't appearing, then I haven't done it yet. Sorry about that. Okay, so look at the knee, look at the ankle, look at the hip, look at the back, put it all together. Watch the patient walk, uh, do your gait analysis. If that knee is stiff, then chances are the hip and the knee and the ankle will also be stiff. And I'm sure you've already noticed how my exercises aren't just focused on the knee, they work the hip and the ankle as well. And most of them are a closed kinetic chain to enhance that proprioception. But you're smart. I bet you've noticed that already. It, make sure we're looking at the whole patient or at least the bottom half. What did I leave out? Well, I purposely left out many of the passive modalities that physiotherapy has unfortunately become synonymous with. No TENS machine, no ultrasound, no taping. Also, no soft tissue massage. Sometimes massage is useful if the tissues are firm and unyielding. Indurated is the word that people use. This is like this, but this massage is more like Syriax cross friction massage over a large area. In theory, your patient can do this with a foam roller, but generally these aren't the kind of patients that do foam rolling. Otherwise, the massage is pretty much useless for a stiff knee. Oh no, we've come to the end of another video. Oh, it makes brings a tear to my eye. But I promised a safe and effective approach to the stiff knee. Remember, most importantly, to recover that extension first before flexion. Your patient needs full extension for walking and as much flexion as you can get. Pain-free exercises, I kept hammering that into you. Pain-free manual therapy, I gave you some options with that. Well, use the heat and then manual therapy. Splinting is controversial. Hit and, hit and miss results. Most everything else is useless, except for some soft tissue massage for that indurated knee. Do you have any tricks and tips for a stiff, meat, stiff knee? What's worked for you? Let me know in the comments below.
My two books are now available at Amazon. What they don't teach you about documentation in physiotherapy school, a short how-to manual for successful daily note templates, and From Injury to Recovery Through Exercise, Simple Functional Exercise Progressions for Physiotherapists to Restore Lifting, Standing, Walking. Thank you for your support. Buckle up, because this video is a wild ride. And by subscribing, you'll be part of a community that values growth and knowledge. Thank you.